Hello Blazers, no fuck is there, how you guys doing today, welcome to a brand new video. Today's video guys, we're gonna be talking about the man, the legend, it's Paul Joseph Watson. Well, imagine my shock. Paul Joseph Watson is an editor at Infowars.com, a conservative, a right winger, you know, somebody who wrecks uh, soy boy liberal, soy boy, most epic Despacito style on the regular. And actually watch him, I think he's pretty entertaining and I actually agree with him on a variety of political topics, some things though I don't agree on whatsoever. Anthony Fantana described him as this. He's essentially the Onision of the Red Pill community. Which I think is a pretty accurate description. So yeah, today I want to react to his non-political but cultural video that he released, which is epic, Despacito. The video is called Love is a Mental Illness. Yes, that's the literal title of the video. In this video, Paul pretty much sounds like a black pill incel. You guys all know who incels are. It's like people who can't get laid on the internet and that hate women and minorities because they're gamers, you know? But if you don't know what black pill is, it's essentially the belief that life is pointless and love is impossible and it's not a real thing. The way Paul phrases himself in this video is just exactly that. It's pretty bad. Let's check it out and see what Paul the soy boy has to say. Love. I love you more than I've ever loved any woman. Everyone wants it. I guess you could say I just want to have a meaningful relationship with someone special. But what happens when you get it? You go completely insane because love is a mental illness. Now, to be clear, <laughs> I'm- That's an epic intro, Paul. Let me do something like that as well. We live in a society. Veronica has friends on us. Gamers, we need to rise up. Because gamers are the most opposed social class on earth. I mean, what the fuck is this? I'm talking about obsessional, romantic love. Nietzsche was right. Love is merely the lust for possession. It's a fundamentally instinctive biological force, which is why it's kind of bizarre how society exalts it as an idealistic moral good. Yeah guys, we live in a society once again. Basically what this video is gonna be throughout is uh, Paul Joseph Watson is gonna say that the society perverted in such a way that actual platonic love is not possible anymore and that people cheat and do shit things to each other only because uh... George Soros has created Tinder. I, I, I don't know, I don't know, dude. Also, Paul speaks in this video as if the terms lust and love are the same, and he's talking about lust this entire video. People think egoism and greed are the opposite of love. Au contraire. Love is about possession and assimilation. What could be more egotistic and greedy? than trying to possess another human. You see, Paul Joseph Watson, just because you want to possess a person in a romantic relationship and your girlfriend cheated on you and you decided to make this video, it doesn't mean that everybody's like that. And I know before you call me a cock or whatever, I'm obviously not one of those people who will like post, uh, my, my wife's boyfriend got me this Wii U. <laughs> If you're a shitty controlling person, then yes, love is possession. But in reality, all romantic relationships are about is supporting each other, helping each other, spending time with each other, and maybe uh, putting pee pee in the weavy every every once in a while. You know what I'm talking about? Romantic love is essentially a base instinct rooted in the reptilian brain, which is only given a sheen of morality or splendor by modern culture, which hijacked it, commercialized it, and warped it out of all proportion. What you call love was invented by guys like me. For most of history, romantic love was considered a disease that you had to catch and get over, like chicken pox. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet wasn't a celebration of love, it was a warning. And Paul says how throughout history love was considered an illness, and only recently the society has told us that love is something we should, you know, strive for. Yeah guys, all people that write love songs, they didn't do it because they actually felt that and wanted to express themselves in music, no, it's because, uh, the Jews paid them. That, that's what it is. You know, this entire video honestly sounds like Paul's internet girlfriend broke up with him or some shit, so he got rejected, and now he's a epic Despacito gamer rising up against the family. It's like, what is this, bro? What could be more enslaving than the complete surrender and devotion to another person at the expense of one's own sanity and free will? Not good. Nietzsche said men who are inclined to complete devotion are not men. Soy boy. In the case of women, they have to- <laughs> He just has to put that clip in there, doesn't he? Paul's basically saying that if you are in a relationship and if you love somebody, you're not a whole human being, and that you need somebody to complete you. Yeah, Paul has really- Paul's really woke, you know? It feels like he just discovered uh, men going their own way, or the insult subreddit or some shit, and he's read a bunch of posts, and he's like, damn son. I really don't need a girlfriend, you know, guys. We live in a society. Maybe I should just game. I should be just a free wandering gamer. And we ain't 
coffee no hoes out here, bruh. And like Paul, it's totally fine. If you want to do that, if you want to spend your life alone, and if you think romantic relationships are not for you, then it's fine. That's your choice. But I don't think you should make all of your 1.3 million subscribers have the exact same opinion and basically tell them that if you seek love, then you're a soy boy cuck. And you guys, we're all conservative, independent gamers. You know, we rise up and uh, stop coughing hoes, bruh. Your opinion is not the only one that matters, Paul. The point is this. Romantic love is corrosive, self-sabotaging, inherently delusional for both sexes, and most of the time it ends in abject misery. It's a mental illness. It's at times an episodic, transitory, obsessive, compulsive, and emotionally lethal disorder. I believe so strongly in the destructive power of love that it should be the subject of instruction in schools along with sex and driver's ed. Love infects, contaminates, and destroys your will to resist. It destabilizes and knocks you for a loop. This guy's a fucking lunatic. <laughs> Like, I honestly feel like I'm being lectured by MGTOW support, sir. It's like this dude has been, like, through, like, five unsuccessful marriages already, and he's telling me. Just because I was shared relationships, you guys, love is a mental illness, and you should never cuff hoes out here, bruh. The society is telling us that love is real, and also, guys, we need to teach this in schools, okay? That love isn't real, and we should never marry and never have kids. And this kind of contradicts the entire point of the video that Paul makes later. He basically talks about later in the video how the rise of social media and such apps as tinder or whatever encourages you know those scheduled sexual acts and it destroys the idea of the nuclear family the conservative american nuclear families that we need more of are going to be destroyed because of tinder the kid in the candy store constantly looking to try the new treat that kills your ability to form long-term meaningful relationships we're giving lectures in schools to 10 year olds how love isn't real and you should never marry anybody or commit to anybody yeah that's not going to destroy the new nuclear family institutes. No way, bruh. That's not happening. Those things are not connected. Paul, you actually seem like an incel. I'm, I'm just scared for you right now, dude. Please stop. I'm just saying, sometimes it's not all it's cracked up to be. So all you incels need to calm your tits. <laughs> Paul, but this is an incel video. Like, this video is just black pill. Romantic love detracts from the only true source of sustained happiness creativity and self-mastery. Being in love is like being a substance abuser in need of higher and higher doses. Neural scans show that the early stages of romantic love look like a brain experiencing drug addiction. This creates not so much an emotion, but the need to fulfill a craving. Now it's important to stress that long-term stable love is completely distinct from new romantic love because it lights up different areas of the brain. I think that we're becoming love junkies. Yeah, Paul, but that's the point. You cannot have long-lasting love without having romantic, insane love in the first place. Like, you see those nuclear families that you love so much that, you know, have kids and grandkids and live together for 50 years? When they first met, their brains were going insane with serotonin and they were like drug addicts trying to get together. And then that explosion has created something more, which created uh, some new Americans. They're now creating working jobs, okay? So what's the point of this video? If you had one romantic relationship and it didn't work out, you should just stop because it's like, every next time you're gonna be like a drug addict. I mean, that's kind of the fucking points. People go through multiple people throughout their lives and they find the one which they stay with and make a nuclear family. It feels like Paul Joseph Watson's high school sweetheart broke up with him, his only girlfriend, and he's now he's upset and thinks that love isn't real. That's, that's what this video is. And this is why cheating and divorce continues to increase. Since we collectively killed God, Humanity has been searching to fill- <laughs> I don't know if that's a meme or if he said that seriously. Since we collectively killed God, humanity has been searching to fill the meaning-shaped hole in its psyche. We try to achieve this partly by engaging in emotional incontinence. By overly emoting and placing too much mm. emphasis on new relationships. Everyone is chasing that initial dopamine rush of new love. And as soon as it fades, we desperately strive to replace it with a fresh source. Once again, the dumb statement that's because we killed God is because you're an atheist and you don't have God in your life that you try to look and fuck people, okay? Instead of trying to have sex with people, turn to Jesus. 
us or become a despacito gamer I, I don't fucking know but not everybody who breaks up with someone immediately looks for a partner yes there's a thing called rebound relationships but a lot of people I know and with some friends of mine like they got out of relationships and these people would not date anybody for like a good six nine months or whatever just because they want to work in themselves to sort out their own struggles and not try to find a romantic partner immediately not everyone is exactly like you think Paul and also not everybody should have the exact same opinion as you well, I guess I'm a, just a soy boy liberal cuck am I right and it's shrinking every year why social media and dating apps. Over a third of people in a 2014 poll said at least part of the reason why their relationship ended was because their partner had met someone else or was flirting with someone else on social media. We live in a society, you guys. Social media is destroying relationships all over the world. When your brain is rewired to be in a state of permanent adolescence, the kid in the candy store constantly looking to try the new treat, that kills your ability to form long-term, meaningful relationships. So Paul said a lot of things here. First of all, he says that social media is destroying families and relationships. People who break up with their partners and people who cheat on their partners, they will always exist and they exist as way before social media was even a thing. When it comes to it, it comes to the person. If a person is loyal, if a person is not a scumbag, then he will not cheat on his spouse, his wife, his girlfriends, whatever, using social media. And if a person already has that thought in the back of his head, like, oh, I wanna fuck the some bitch on the side, you know, wanna get a side check. You know, it doesn't matter if it's 1961 and there's no internet or social media, or it's 2018 where we live in a society, he will cheat on his wife. He will find a way regardless. Okay? Social media does not pressure us to cheat on our spouses. It's just, it's just, if you're a shitty person, you just have that ability now. But at the same time, is that social media also gives you the ability to meet new people that you have never met in your entire life and maybe even get relationships with them. You know, I'm talking to you, a uh, Discord dating server enthusiast. <laughs> Paul saying that cheating and divorces, uh, you know, stem from dating apps. Yeah, guys, that is the conservative truth bomb on you. We live in a society. George Soros created dating apps. Fuck you, dudes. Why you gotta destroy my family, you dickheads? Gamers, rise up. <laughs> That's partly why fewer people in technocentric societies are getting married or having kids. That's why relationships are in such a mess. That's why we're all screwed. Because our brains are being scrambled, infantilized and set on a constant loop of being stuck in a cycle of mental illness. Not good. Look, if Paul's video was just about this, I would have not made this response, okay? Because even though I don't think that if you're a good person, you would cheat on your spouse anyway, and social media doesn't really influence that, I guess there is a correlation between the amount of divorces and cheating and the existence of social media. But the whole other parts of the video about how love is a mental illness and you should never love or commit to anybody, that is just flat out fucking ridiculous. Like, honestly, Paul just sounds like a butthurt bitch because his big titty goth EGF broke up with him or some shit. <laughs> I don't know what this is, dude. So yeah, guys, that's just pretty much it for today's video. I just wanted to take a look at Pajama Watson's new epic red pill uh, eye-opening video. Woke video, you feel me? If you guys agree with my point of view, if you don't agree, you know, make sure to leave your opinions down in the comments below as well. Make sure to smash the motherfucking like on this video if you did enjoy it. And as well, make sure to check out my Patreon down in the description to to support my craft. <laughs> yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.